Lights on. Woo! Lights off. Um, lights on again. Hi, YouTube. Ooh, I'm blurry. Sorry about that. Now I'm in focus. Anyway, tonight I'm going to talk about home theater lighting, what I chose to do with the lights, and uh, I don't know if you've seen in some of my other videos, there used to be lights up here, not where the speaker holes are, like over here, but uh, they're elsewhere. I deleted the lights, and uh, I've moved them to the soffits. So this explains what lights I chose, what I did with them. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and happy building. Hi, YouTubers. Hey, uh, my big head won't fit. Okay, well, anyway, today we're talking about home theater lighting and what I did. Hey, um, I spent a tremendous amount of hours looking for lights. Here goes my hands. My head won't fit. It's too damn big. But anyway, um, to make a long story short, I looked on line. I went to stores, went to the big box stores, Home Depot, Lowe's. Just didn't find a light that really fit the bill because... The problem was that your average light, you know, you're, you got the six inch diameter uh, cone or whatever it is, you got your four or five inch bulb. Well, that just doesn't work well with a home theater because, uh, and if you've been watching my series, you'll notice that up in the ceiling, up in the ceiling, <laughs> there were uh, four lights uh, in the theater area that I just didn't like. So I ended up removing them and ended up. Uh, sheet rocking them over and they were textured over, they're painted over, they're gone. So this way they're not going to reflect anything from the projector or from the screen. So I've moved all of the lighting to the soffits that were built around the theater. So I'm going to stop showing off my hands here because i got big ugly hands, but anyway. Let's get to the lights that I chose and the reason why I chose them. Um, these are from Torch Star. Got them on Amazon, and you know, luckily, I chose wisely. I ended up getting the 5000K, the really bright white ones. I did buy the 2700s first, and they're soft white, but they were just too yellow, and um, didn't really like the light. But I really love the bright whiteness, especially in the dark room with all of the uh, the dark colors that I have in the theater. So, uh, and th this is the part that I really liked about it. One is because they came in a six-pack. I actually bought three six-packs of these. And, uh, too bad you can't drink them. Now, I'm going to pull one of these buggers out. And they're really small. That's, oh, sorry, let me put it in the screen. Uh, they're small. They're, it takes, I think, a three and a half inch hole. This is three and a quarter inch. So I went to the big box store, bought a three and a half inch diameter a hole saw attached to my drill and whoop, up into the soffit, drilled the perfect holes, ran the wires, and uh, there we go. Let me just take this apart and show it to you. I really, really like these. Um, I forget the name of this fitting. Oh yeah, the GU-10. It's a GU-10 fitting, so it's a very small bulb, and they are LED, so they're energy efficient. And, there we go, if you've never seen one of these before, they are small. I mean, look at the size of that bulb. And the brightness is incredible. When I'm done here, I'm going to turn the camera off and uh, edit it in that, and show you what they look like. Man, they are incredibly bright and incredibly small. So this way you don't have a giant light bulb like this to cause reflection. And instead of having... You know, a dark ceiling with this large light hanging there. You got this tiny little thing. Now, the only complaint that I have about this. Well, oh, before I start getting to complaints, let me uh, show you something that I really liked, and I was really quite surprised. You push right here, open this sucker up, remove the door, and then you've got all your wires right here, and it already has quick connectors. So a uh, 14 gauge wire pops right into this and there are 
three connectors. So you can put three different wires into each one of these. So this way you can run them in all different directions. And I just basically daisy chained them all the way around the ceiling. And uh, boy, it worked out great. They installed real easily. And this was cool too. So when it comes time to install, I don't know if you can see in here, but uh, right here, you just give it a little push and, oh, sorry, let me get that centered for you. Whoop, that just pushes in. It's like a little spring. Pretty sweet, huh? So you do that on both sides. Boop, boop. And then you've got a uh, little spring-loaded action there. And then you, when you get all your wiring done, they've got... Uh, these little doodads, you pry these suckers out and jam your wire in there and there's a tab in there that will hold it in place so you don't have to get any uh, types of grommets or anything like that. It's all ready to go. But you know, you can get one of those, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank on what those are called. But you can put those in here if you want where you screw them in. And, uh, but really not necessary. And uh, you know, just stick a screwdriver in there, pry it up, bend it out of the way or twist it with a pair of pliers or if you've got strong fingers, away it goes. And there you are. Really, really like these. Oh, by the way, so you can see how these lock. So when you pop it up into the ceiling, um, you go from the inside, little push, little push, and voila! It's locked in place. This light isn't going anywhere. So really, really like these lights. I'm very impressed with them. So if you're going to be building a custom home theater, I highly recommend these uh, these puppies from Torch Star. Uh, the uh, three inch recessed gimbal lighting kit highly recommend them and no i paid for them <laughs> they were not given to me uh everything that i'm doing here uh any type of endorsement that i give on a product is uh i paid for but uh let me see here oh this is what i want to talk about the one thing i don't like and this was the hardest part was my ceiling is black these puppies are white now, you really don't want to put these into a black ceiling, because the, and they are a little shiny, so it is a little semi-gloss here, so it is going to reflect light. So, I'm going to show you in a few minutes. First, I'm going to show you some of the lights I've already installed, but after that, I'm going to show you how to take these apart completely. They're just riveted together. Uh, how to use a drill to take them apart, and then uh, sand them. Uh, one thing that I don't show you is that you need to wash them. Stick them in a sink after you sand them to get all oils off, all dust, etc., etc. And uh, then once they dry, how to paint them and the paint that I used. I actually used a, f a uh, not a flat, but a matte Rust-Oleum product that is designed for painting like racing stripes on a car. And it came out fantastic. I'll show you that canon throughout the video when I'm doing the spray painting, but I'll also put it in the uh, comments below for you to see. Got it at uh, Home Depot. It was about eight bucks and it came out fantastic. I even did all the uh, return registers and the uh, HVAC vents with that paint. And because it's a matte, boy, it came out fantastic. I'm really, really impressed with this paint. Uh, done a lot of painting before. Uh, I used to be a professional painter when I was younger, but Boy, it really came out great, and you will see the finished product, and then I'm going to put them back together, and you'll see how it all goes. So, without any further ado, let's move on to the next segment of this video.
Okay, so we've got all of our parts painted. So what used to be white is now black. And it looks fantastic. The Rust-Oleum paint is fantastic. I mean, it was really hot today. It was about 90 to 100 degrees. So uh, the paint dried so quickly that I was literally able to do multiple coats, one right after another, without having to pause. It was just so hot and bam, it just dried. So it made very easy work. And if you also noticed in the video, I had my turntable. Um, I use that for painting small parts. And I had my tent. Um, that was really cool. That was uh, about $27 on Amazon. And that is fantastic for painting small parts. Now I do have a big painting tent where I paint larger things like furniture, frames, and stuff like that. Um, but you know, it's got a giant fan and a blower and it takes me about an hour to set that up. So I have to paint a lot of stuff. But Okay, I'm getting off track here, but let's get back to this stuff over here. Um, putting this stuff back together. Now it's... One thing you want to do is make sure that you take a photo of how everything went back together. Because um, the first time I did these, I hadn't taken a photo, but luckily I had two other boxes of them to uh, pull one out. So in fact, I got a finished one over here. Be right back. All right. Oops. There we go. Let's move that again. And you want to make sure that this metal retaining clip is put in the down position, or is it the up position? I am drawing a blank here. Where's that white one? There we go. There we go. So I have a brand new one here. You can see how it's hanging all the way. So there's a big gap between here and here. Make sure that's put in because I put these together wrong and they're very difficult to twist once they're put back together. So let's reassemble. All right, so I'm going to put this out here just as a, a little reminder on how to put it all back together. So first we're going to take, uh, oh, rivet tool, rivet gun. Five bucks with a whole bunch of different sized rivets. Only five bucks at Harbor Freight. So absolute fantastic deal. It is junk. But for this, it'll do the job. I don't rivet stuff often, so this is just fine. Now, if I rivet it a lot, I'd have a much nicer tool. All right. So, that's a already used rivet. So is that. <laughs> All right. Now, take a quick look here again. So, refresh my memory on how this thing goes back together. All right. I got it. So, that goes down. That goes down. Washer it takes two washers like that, and you take one. Well, that's not a very good rivet. Put that aside. This is a good rivet. I'm going to insert that here into our gun, and now we are going to do this. All right, see that? And we're going to do that. Got the little washer there. Put this piece over here. Like so. And give it a squeeze. Alright. Alright. All right. There we go. One pop rivet down. Now the other one is a little bit different because we have that little metal clip that holds the light bulb in place. So you gotta make sure you integrate this into that as well. So we're going to load our gun. There we go. I'm going to line this up and make sure that I do it the same as this. So it doesn't go down like that. It goes like that way. And you want to wiggle that in. There we go. Oh, I just remembered something. Ah, boy. Just remembered. Do this side first. <laughs> it's easier doing this side. Okay, so put this in on your first uh, crimp that you do, or your first rivet. Makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna try to get this done right here. There we go. Put up against the body. 
and give it a squeeze. There we go. All right. So now I got this puppy back together. All right. Now we're going to take this guy and we're going to drop it in here. And you don't have to paint all this area because this is facing the ceiling anyway. This is all that you're going to see once it's installed inside the ceiling. Drop it on in there. All right now. Oh, I didn't have the tools, right? But I didn't have the tools ready. Okay, so we're going to have to bend all these things back in that we unbent uh, at the beginning of the video. Let me find a good tool for that. I got lots of tools around here. Good. Just eh, even just a small screwdriver will do. Oh, when you're doing it, don't do it on something rough. Put something down that's soft because you don't want to scratch up or scrape off all the paint that you just did. And this hasn't cured entirely yet either. It's, uh, even though it's dry, yeah, you want to let it cure for about 24 hours before you do it. I'm impatient. I want to get this done. And uh, here we go. So we want to push one of these tabs in that keeps it from rotating round and round and round. Now only one tab needs to be pushed in. And if you recall when you bought these new, only one tab was in. So I'm just going to choose this one right here. Give it a little push. There we go. All right, you can see that there now. Let's see if you can see it. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, well, anyway, take my word for it. And then we'll push these little, these three little square tabs back in. All right, give that a push. There you go, there's one. I should be using a bigger screwdriver, but I don't want to waste your time looking for one. All right, there we go. There's two. And come on, number three. There we go. All right. It's all back together. Now, doesn't that look awesome? Oh, and this is something else that's really cool about these lights. They rotate so you can twist them. So they don't have to be go pointing straight down. You can point them at the wall. You can twist them. So rotate them. And they also tilt. Look at that. So when they're, uh, oh, sorry about that, I keep trying. So they tilt so you could have them in a flat ceiling and then pointing at your wall or pointing in towards the side of the room, however you want them, and then they turn within. Pretty sweet, huh? I told you, man, these lights are great. All right, guys, so now let's go put one in the ceiling and uh, you can see the finished product. So hang on. Okay, now we're gonna add the finishing touches to the light. And we've got our, let's get it there, there we go. We got our trim ring all painted black. All right, there it is. Okay, now, we're gonna pop this puppy up in there, just kinda wiggle it up there. Remember that's a three and a half inch circle, because this is three and a quarter. And uh, it's better to buy a bull saw, not a, uh, don't do it with a, drywall saw or a knife or anything like that. It's just, uh, just doesn't work well. So I kind of popped it up there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. So please stand by. All right. There we go. And then remember what I showed you with the locking, push those tabs in, push that tab in. Oh, and what's great is that you can just pop them out and this will pull back down. Pretty freaking sweet. Excuse my. <laughs> and uh, take the light like so, squeeze it in that little bracket. All right, get it all centered. And wiggle it on in, and voila. There we go. The lights are done. Now, the only regrets that I have with these lights, well, it's not the lights themselves, it was my decision. Because when I first put the lights up, they were, um, let me take a little zoom out here. And uh, you can see I've got lots of these lights around. There's one, and let me move the ladder out of the way. I have them going all around, see the top of the screen, all the way down the soffit. And uh, got some over there. I didn't put enough in. So when I first started doing all of these, 
the walls were white, and my God, it was blinding, absolutely blinding. I mean, it felt like you were outside, but then when we started painting with the black and the maroon colors, all the light just disappeared. So if I was to do this again, now for example, up there above the screen, I've got three lights pointing down. And then over here in each soffit, I got three lights on each side. I probably would have done over here four lights, maybe even five. And then same thing over here, just not enough of them. Um, so that was a mistake, but this will help you in the future that if you decide to do some lighting, put a few more of them in if you're going with a dark color. If you're not going with dark colors like these, then uh, you know three over here like I did. Whoops, there we go, there's my fat finger. So three over there would be just fine if you have you know, brightly colored walls, but because these are such dark rich colors and uh, it all it's all painted matte, I didn't do flat. Flat was just too blah, so I did matte. So there's a little bit of sheen, but anyway, Put more lights in if you're going dark. If you're going light colors, this will be just fine. So anyway, that's about it. Now, once again, that important thing is, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Where's my thumb? There it is, my fat thumb. Give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down. I can take it. And uh, if you wanna continue watching some of my uh, DIY videos for building your own home theater, subscribe to my channel. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great one.